Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to this webinar about literacy beyond food, tips and tricks for a successful uh, talk story grant proposal. Next slide. So we'll start off with introducing ourselves. Uh, my name is Tina Chan. I work at MIT Libraries. Uh, my pronouns are she and her hers. I'm the Reference Services Program Manager and Humanities Librarian. Uh, my name is Janae Solomon, she, her. Um, I'm also uh, at the University of Iowa, an undergraduate engagement librarian. Um, happy to be here. Hi everyone, my name is Patty Sumita McGowan. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the metadata librarian at the National Defense University. And my name is Sarah Nguyen. I, um, I, go, I use the pronouns she, they. And I'm a PhD student at the University of Washington's Information School, um, but I'm also co-chair of the Family Literacy Focus Committee for Apollo. Thanks so much for joining. Next slide. Okay, hey, well, we'll talk about today. Oh, all right. I'll also say just really quickly, sorry about interrupting yes, you. Yes, go ahead. Um, well, this is in collaboration with the American Indian Library Association, but um, we were unable to find a time and just like the bandwidth and resources to have Angela or someone from ALA to actually join us. But um, we hope that uh, they'll be able to um, be represented within this um, capacity. And so if you have any questions, let us know, or we will also include Ayla's um, contact as well, because they are also a part of this grant. There you go. Yeah, thanks, Sarah, for mentioning that. Uh, today, we'll talk about uh, family literacy and the Talk Story program. I'll give you some examples um, and tips of uh, winning proposals. We'll give you information about the grant, the resources, and the process. And we'll have time for Q&A and uh, how you can connect with us. Next slide, please. Uh, so what is family literacy? Uh, family literacy supports uh, parents, grandparents, and caregivers as uh, children's first teachers. Um, children and their motivators, uh, motivation to learn are influenced by the learning attitudes and literacy behaviors demonstrated by adults. Uh, literacy, includes um, other kinds of literacy, such as digital, financial, culinary, health, document, information, and media literacies, and much more. Um, this uh, grant, uh, Talk Story, Sharing Stories, and Sharing Culture, supports opportunities for adult family members to build literacy skills as they strengthen their children's literacy skills. Next slide. Thanks, Tina. Yeah, so this grant um, is like the merger of family literacy and talk story coming from our subcommittee of family literacy focus. So what is talk story though? The um, creation of talk story was actually inspired by a Hawaiian expression that means to chat informally or to shoot the breeze. So that's kind of just the ethos that this grant is kind of trying to bring about within the programming. Um, it's inspired by a linguistic scholar who describes it as like a rambling personal experience mixed with folk material. And then we also are inspired by Maxine Hong Kingston's use of the term to describe Chinese and Chinese American storytelling style, which is more of like an oral history, oral history tradition mythology, genealogies, bedtime stories, and how two stories that have been passed down between generations. Um, that's essential to part of like family and community lifestyle. So a lot of the focus that we um, really support is intergenerational passing of stories. Um, the beginning of Talk Story grant and programming actually started as Talk Story, Sharing Stories, Sharing Culture, began as a part of the ALA past president, Dr. Camila Alier's Family Literacy Focus Initiative in promoting literacy across diverse communities. And so that's why we're bridging together Apala and Ayla as a part of this grant. Next slide, please. So uh, this Google map it shows the locations of most of our past winners um, besides Guam. Um, since 2010, and starting with seven pilot programs around the country, we've awarded over 70 grants. Our winners range from a variety of libraries and institutions, including schools, special libraries, nonprofit organizations, um, even help family um, service programs, historical societies, friends groups, and others. Um, the list that you see here shows just a few of our winners from the past few years. Uh, to name a few, uh, the Cloquet Public Library in Minnesota, the Joseph Adabo School in New York, 
um, American Indian and Health and Fam Family Ser Services in Detroit. Um, and to see a complete list of all the awards and details about their projects, you can visit Talk Stories website at apolloweb.org. And next slide will show um, uh, some more examples of the types of awards that we've, um, the grants that we've awarded. So the team here reviewed the 2021 grant applications and um, we pulled some general trends that we saw from successful applicants and then, well, some applicants that needed a little more guidance. Um, so here I have for you this slide, tips for success. So first tip is to clearly demonstrate your need. Like the Irvine International Academy was a new school with um, a huge language immersion need. They had over-enrolled their students and had over 60% of Asian Pacific Islander American students enrolled. The Novi Public Library intentionally identified their distinct Asian communities. Um, they programmed for a bilingual story time and they specifically addressed their demographics. Another tip for success is to create unique or creative programming. Like the Springdale Public Library wanted to create their own media of um, videos and books based on their already existing collection. The Joseph P. Adabo School uh, wanted to program an intergenerational reading buddy program. And the Manoa Public Library um, had a vast population of community storytellers so they brought them in and they recorded their sessions for future viewers. Um, some other tips for success is to avoid vague and unintentional um, application, like no collaborations with community member organizations or screening one film based on the popular movie Totoro, but it's not representative of your community or hosting a luau event in a community that doesn't serve many Pacific Islanders. So instead think who are your demographics and then specifically what are their needs and then the purpose of your programming. Also to avoid over budgeting in your application. Like what is the cost of hosting a well-known author? If this um, exceeds the cost, then what are my alternatives and what materials would be purchased as well? Next, I'll talk about um, the grant info, some information and the process, and Janae will help me with the slide. So about the Talk Story grant. Again, this award enables libraries and community organizations to um, provide programming for their APIA, AIAN communities, their children and their families. Um, there are four total grants awarded, two $500 grants from Apollo and two $500 grants from AILA, at least 25% of the funds must be used for library materials like books, DVDs, um, music, arts and crafts supplies, or programming costs for like hiring a storyteller or author. No more than 10% of the funds may be used for refreshments and decorations. And it must support at least one Asian Pacific Islander American or American Indian Alaska Native themed program for children and their families. And um, like last year, you may not have the opportunity to conduct in-person programming, so funds can be used for virtual programming. I'll pass it off to Janae, who will talk about resources available and important dates. Uh, thanks, Patty. So to help prepare for your grant, we want to make you aware of some of the resources available to you um, on the Apollo website uh, under the Talk Story uh, webpage you'll find uh, more resources such as a guide for parents, a family engagement tool, as well as recordings of past webinars. There is a webinar under the archive publications called Sharing Our Stories uh, with Liana Juliano, Katrina Nai, um, Zumin Zong, and which was a webinar done in 2018 that does detail a more of the history of talk story and the purpose in advocating for sharing cultures and st um, stories as well. If you have questions, you can contact uh, Family Lit at Apollo web.org and make sure to like our social media pages on Instagram and Facebook at Talk Story Together to find the latest information and more resources. Um, the timeline is, um, is right there on the screen, but I can uh, kind of go over that a little bit. 
So beginning December 1st, applications will be available on our website, as well as through our social media platforms and ways to, um, and ways to go about um, submitting your application. Make sure we do receive your application in full by March 15th of 2022. Uh, we'll announce the winning grants by May 1st. Uh, now funds do have to be used by November 30th of that year in the financial narrative reports are due at the end of the calendar year, uh, December 31st, 2022. Uh, make sure to keep an eye out for social media and PR on, on important dates and resources. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and show you um, a draft of our web form. Again, like Janae said, that application will be released on December 1st and will be made available on our apolloweb.org Talk Story Together grant website. Bear with me while I exit this. Oops, sorry. Okay, you should be seeing my, um, the Google form. So you can uh, submit your form two ways by, uh, using this Google form, this web form here, or downloading a PDF copy of the application by clicking this link and then submitting it here. Go back to the slide. Is Tina frozen for you all? Oh, no, wait. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, I'm still here. OK, thanks all for coming. Um, there's our contact information um, on, uh, on the screen. If you want to email us, it's familylit at apolloweb.org. And then if you have questions about the American Indian Alaska Native Programming, to contact Angela at uh, aila.talkstory at gmail.com. And we're also on Facebook and Instagram at Talk Story Together. Uh, so does anybody have any questions? Uh, you can type in the chat or um, I imagine because we're a small group, I mean, we can unmute, they can unmute and then we can have more like a conversation. Yeah, feel free to unmute if you have questions. I'll also add that um, if you are once, our application process opens in December. And even before then, or during the process before the due date, if you'd like to workshop your ideas with us, um, just to see if you're on the right path, we're more than happy to um, email with you, get on a quick Zoom call, just to um, figure out the best strategic approach for you. We're mostly interested in just making sure that everyone is able to write, put together a proposal that is really um, culturally aware and cognizant and really serves your community. So we're more than happy to help you with that. Any questions, thoughts, feedback? Yeah, like Janae said, please um, share this with your colleagues and anyone else you are aware of. We're trying to push this out into all the listservs but a lot of those times those emails do get lost in people's inbox, so. Now I have a question. Mm -hmm. Since the deadline is mid-March and um, we offer to, um, for people to send us their, their proposal like as a draft to make sure they're on, they're on the right path, how soon do you think um, they should send that in by? a good question. I mean, we are we are the committee, so we can we can talk about that. Of uh, for me, I would love to see the like the latest. Give me like at least a week or two before the deadline, if you expect to have like decent, robust, you know, feedback where we can actually put something together. Um, that would be ideal, but you know, you never know what happens in the world. So, <laughs> what would be all of your preferences? Yeah, I would think so too, like at least a week. Yeah, 
Is the rubric available yeah. to applicants? Amy is asking, is the rubric available to applicants to use as they are writing their proposals? Yeah, we usually have, um, let me see on the website if I can actually include the link out to that. So we have, this is um, also being updated. I think it's, a, is it already updated? Yes, it has been updated here. So here's the, a rubric for um, evaluating APIA youth literature specifically. Um, and so then this will kind of help you gauge on what types of literature and media to include in your programming um, as you go about writing your proposal and approach literacy. Oh, is the for grading the grant? Um, Amy, I feel like you might be able to speak to that. <laughs> is this available on the website? I should know this. Let me see. I don't think it is, Sarah. Okay. The rubric. Correct. Not yet, at least. Okay. Maybe that's something. Oh, we just have a new. Dignity. Um, oh, you know, that is something that we could ask. Um, we could consider about providing the rubric um, for grading the grant proposals so that it is more transparent and that we could provide that on the website. Um, yeah, something we can talk about. I think that is a, an interesting thing to do and also helps with the process. So we will announce that if and when it is does come become publicly available. Are people interested in that? Interested in having access to the rubric for grading for your proposal writing process? All right, Jen. <laughs> because Jen said yes, we will do it. <laughs> and um, Kitty, I know you just joined in and it's a little bit late, but this um, we just finished the presentation and it will be it has been recorded and we'll post it on our website uh, for you to access uh, so that you'll have reference on um, how to write a successful proposal for the talk story grant. Maybe we can wait like 1025 for a good round number and then probably close it out. But please feel free to contact us. All right, I'll type it in the chat as well. I would say it might be also helpful to, to share slides too in case you can click on the links in the slides if possible, they can get to that over there. Or you, like can, share the, you can share the chat, uh, not the chat, but maybe the resources in the chat. Yeah, that's a good idea. We, when we post the um, recording of this webinar, we'll also go ahead and include the slides as a link out too. I think that'll be a nice resource to give you all the resources, rubric, slides, recording. Amy asks, how broadly can applicants interpret family literacy? Does anyone want to take that one on? I'm happy to. For us, while we did include kind of our working definition of family literacy, I think that given that relationships, identities in today's society changes so much and as well as is very dynamic and has so many different interpretations, I think we are very open to that idea. I think the most important thing to include is that it is community and intergenerational um, oriented. So that because we do see that within media and information and story literacy does pass on 
for like a sustainability effort. So that's something that we're really interested in. But um, it definitely doesn't have to be just, you know, family blood literacy. We definitely support community oriented, um, chosen family, anything that really brings together the sharing of cultures and stories and narratives um, around a group of people. And of course, because we do come from Apala and Ayla, there is the grounding that we are supporting our specific communities um, of our identities. But we are definitely open to ideas and happy to workshop them with you as you write your grants. All right. I am, I'm going to stick around for a few more minutes, um, play some of this like low lo-fi music and if anyone has any questions feel free to chime in uh but i'll just put it on in the background just so that we can have like a, a sort of beat going on while we wait for questions <laughs> oh no we don't want that one we should stop recording do you think yeah Thank you everyone for joining. We really appreciate it. And um, for those who joined late, we will be uh, sharing the recording widely as well as the slides for um, you and your colleagues. So please do share with your friends. Thank you. Bye everyone, take care. Bye. Bye. -bye. Oh, are you still recording? It's just I think yeah. we should stop recording.